This time I'm going to look at several problems involving logarithmic differentiation. Specifically, you're going to want to use logarithmic differentiation when you have a variable that's part of an exponent. Uh, what that's going to allow you to do is to bring that exponent out around in the front, creating a product, and then you can apply the product, the product rule to solve. Most of these are also going to involve implicit differentiation at some point. So the first one, you could have memorized the format for this. In fact, we've done that earlier in the year, so certainly if you just want to crank it out, you can. This would be when I have a constant raised to a variable power. Uh, with that said, I'd like to look at how to do this using logarithmic differentiation. Uh, so you recognize there's variables part of the exponent. Taking the natural log of both sides would give me a way to rewrite this in another form. So I'm going to take the natural log of y and set that equal to the natural log of 4 to the x. Completely legal, those two values are equal, so their natural logs are going to be equal. Now I'm going to take the derivative. So don't just leave it in this form. All you've done is write another equal equation. Um, so the derivative of y is 1 over y times the derivative of that inside function. Remember, I'm taking the derivative implicitly here. Derivative of y with respect to x is dy dx. So that's going to be 1 over y dy dx equals, and on this side, that natural log of 4 to the x is going to become x times the natural log of 4. Keep in mind that the natural log of 4 is a constant. So I'm going to end up getting a derivative here of, it's just the natural log of 4 times x. Well, that's just going to be the natural log of 4 when I take the derivative, just the constant value there, since it was only multiplied by something taken to the first power. Uh, now, I want to solve for dy dx, so I need to multiply both sides by y here, and I want to write my derivative in terms of x. So at the end, I know that y is the same thing as 4x, 4 to the x. I'm going to simplify that in there. And so dy dx is equal to 4 to the x times the natural log of 4. So technically just multiplying by the natural log of the base, and you'll have your derivative. Um, for number 2, same kind of thing. I have a variable that's an exponent. And I don't have a constant here, so I'm going to have to use logarithmic differentiation. So once again, I'll take the log of both sides. ln of y equals the natural log of 4x plus 3 raised to the 2x power. But I'm going to take that 2x power around out in front. And you'll notice this time I have variables in both parts of the product. So I am going to have to use the product rule. This is going to be a little bit more complicated. Um, the answer is not going to be particularly pretty in this case. Uh, so the derivative on this side is going to be 1 over y times the derivative of the inside function dy dx equals the derivative of the, of the first is 2 times the second ln of 4x plus 3 uh, plus the derivative of the second, I have to write this on the second line here, derivative of the second is 1 over 4x plus 3 times the derivative of the inside function, which is 4, times 2x. Okay, and probably I would want to combine these two values together and write that as an 8x. And keep in mind that this whole part needs to be multiplied by y. Okay, so the whole thing gets multiplied by y here. And of course, remember that y is this original value. So not a real pretty answer here, but my derivative is going to be y prime equals, it's going to be the 2 ln of 4x plus 3 plus 8x over 4x plus 3. All of that times that original y value, 4x plus 3, taken to the 2x power. So not exactly a real pretty solution there, but the process really isn't all that bad. It's the same process as what you're doing up here. You're just having to apply the product rule and the chain rule. And my third example here, uh, this is a problem where you could take a derivative using the quotient rule. Uh, 
uh, you would probably want to rewrite this as being taken to the one-fourth power. Um, but this can also be done using logarithmic differentiation, and I wanted to give an example of why that's potentially a good idea. Um, again, I can take the natural log of both sides. So that's the natural log of y equal, equals the natural log of this whole quotient, which is 2x minus 1 raised to the sixth power, over 5x plus 7 raised, that'll be a 1 fourth power. These are not the same function, obviously, so I can't simplify an exponent there or anything like that. Keep in mind, though, a log of a quotient is equal to the log of the numerator minus the log of the denominator. Uh, so I can rewrite this if I want to as the natural log of y equals the natural log of 2x minus 1. And remember that whole thing was being raised to the sixth power, but I can swing that around as a constant um, coefficient out in front. And I can subtract the log of the natural log, so I can take the derivative, of 5x plus 7. And again, I have that exponent of 1 fourth, which I can bring out in front. And the derivative here, really not all that bad. That's going to be a 1 over y dy dx. Um, natural log is 1 over the inside function. It's a reciprocal. So that's going to be 1 over 2x minus 1. Um, times the derivative of the inside function, which is going to be 2. And then, of course, I have 2 times 6, which is 12. So it gives me 12 over that on the inside. Uh, for the second part here, I have minus. It'll be 1 over 5x plus 7 times the derivative of the inside function, which is going to be 5. And I've also got that 1 fourth out there. So um, I can have 5 fourths in the numerator here. Um, you could also write that as 5 in the numerator over 4 times that entire denominator there. And to close this out, remember that both sides need to be multiplied by y just to get dy dx. Um, in this case, y is equal to that original function. So I'm going to replace the y with the original function. And the original function is 2x minus 1 raised to the sixth power over the fourth root of 5x plus 7. And that ends up being my final derivative. Um, again, is it a real neat process? No, it's a little bit sloppy. On the other hand, basic processes that we've been working with for quite a while now all combine together to make this something that's relatively doable, even if the answer is a little bit ugly.